Okay, so yesterday I started talking about the 45, 45, 90, right? But then I also mentioned we have another rule, the 30, 60, 90. So you should have some writing on the left side of number 29. So I'm going to look at the 30, 60, 90, but I'm going to use the right side of the of the space. You should have something about here, right? Let me put an X because on your notes, you should have some writing there. So I'm going to avoid that. I'm not asking you to put an X on it. I'm just tell, I'm just doing an X. So I'm going to avoid that site because you should have something written there. Okay, so now for the 30, 60, 90, let me start this rule with just an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle means all the sides are equal. Because all the sides are equal, guess what? All the angles are equal as well. So I have a 60-60 triangle. 60-60-60. And all the sides are equal, so let's just start with one side. Let's just say I came over it and I said, okay, one side, let's call this side 8. So guess what? All the sides are 8 as well. But then the 60-60 rule for the sides is kind of boring, right? It's pretty, pretty simple. Some of you might be wondering, um, I I don't need a 60-60-60. I need a 30-60-90. All right. So let me come in one angle. Let me look at the angle on the top. Let me cut it in half. So this is 30 degrees. And then I have 60 degrees here. And then obviously I have 90 degrees here. So I have a 30, 60, 90. Okay, so as a matter of fact, let me do copy that triangle here. I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And I know my measurements, this side is eight. Now the bottom side, I know the whole side at the bottom was eight, but notice how I'm cutting it in half. So I'm gonna say this side right here, it is four because I cut it in half. So this is one thing I want you guys to keep in mind. The smallest side is always half of the big side. Pretty simple, right? The smallest side, it's always half of the big side. So if I give you the big side is eight, well, guess what? The small side is four. If I tell you, if I change this, and I say the big side is 10, well, the small side is five. The small side is always half of the big side. The same thing, I can give you the small side, right? I say four. Well, for you to get the big side, multiply by two. What if I tell you the big, the small side? The small side is five. Well, the big side is 10, right? Five times two. So the big side and the small side are easy to connect. Now there's a, a part of this other side, that this medium side, right? I see 30 degrees is opposite from the small side. So the, the smallest angle is opposite from the small side. The biggest angle is opposite from the big side. So the medium angle is opposite from the medium side. So I'm calling this the medium side. Now, let me show you let me show you guys how to solve for it, given, given uh, two sides. So using Pythagorean theorem. And then I'm going to give you guys a shortcut. But again, we're going to come up with a shortcut from Pythagorean theorem. Let me call that side x for right now. According to Pythagorean theorem, I know x squared plus 4 squared is equal to 8 squared. So I have that x squared plus 16 is equal to 64. And then I see the two numbers. Oh, man, I wish I could subtract them. I wish they could be together. Well, make them together. Put them together. It's just the plus 16. I'm going to move it to the other side as a minus 16. Don't forget to switch the side. So that gives me that x squared is equal to 48. Ah, so that's not bad. X is the square root of 48. You type that in on a calculator, you have a decimal. So you're like, oh, okay, so there's something else I have to do. I know how to simplify radicals. 
I'm gonna break this into two radicals. So two numbers that multiply equals 48. One of them is a perfect squared. I'm gonna think 16 times three because the square root of 16 is four. So X is four radical three. Then I ask myself, can I simplify more? If I could, simplify it. If I cannot, that's it. X is four radical three. So let me take this X away and I'm gonna call this four times radical three. We saw that from our Pythagorean theorem. Some of you might be wondering, Mr. Leonzo, what's the shortcut now? Okay. Let me do a shortcut here. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then I'm gonna say, I wanna start from the small side. I want the small side to be given to get to the large side. That was easy, Mr. Leonzo. We multiply by two. Okay. Good, from the small side to the large side, multiply by two. And I check it on the top, four times two. Yeah, that works. And what if you're going backwards? Well, Mr. Leon, so I divide by two. Eight divided by two. Yeah, that works, that's not that bad. The small side and the large side is not that bad. How about the small side and the medium side? Well, if you're given the small side, in this case, multiply by radical three. Let's see, four times radical three. Ah, yeah, that works. What if you're going backwards? Then you divide by radical three. Some of you are wondering, does that really work over here? Let's see. Four radical three divided by radical three, they cancel out. Yeah, it works. So this is my shortcut. Now notice, notice that let me call this side medium. There's no connection in between the large side and the medium side. You have to go through the small side always. Okay, so let's take a look at question number 32. I'm gonna say here's my 30 degrees, because it has 30, 60, 90. I usually give you only two angles because pretty much you can figure the third side. So here I have the small side. I wanna start with the small side, so that's not bad. Let me get to the hypotenuse. Let me get to the big side. Let me solve for the big side. I remember, according to our, our shortcut, I have to go the small side times two. So 10 times two. No, 10 times two is 20. So the big side is 20. Not that bad. How about the medium side? I remembered that I have to go the small side, which is 10 times radical three. Well, a whole number and a radical cannot be combined. So my answer in this case is gonna be 10 radical three. Remember, we type that as 10 radical three. Easy, knowing our formula, easy. How about here? How about number 33? Let's see, my 30 degree angles here. So this side is the small side. And I remember that from the small side to the medium side, notice this is the medium side, I had to multiply by radical three. So I'm going backwards now. So I should divide by radical three. Okay, so let's work that out. Let me just go seven divided by radical three. Boom. But I remembered, I remember I cannot have radicals at the bottom. I call this, I remember when we covered this, I call this rationalize the denominator. And then I said, when you have a radical at the bottom, that is not a perfect squared, you can easily multiply top and bottom by that radical. So that gives me seven radical three over three. Because remember, when I multiply a radical by itself, I just get the number on the inside. I look at my fraction, 7 over 3. Can I do better? No. Okay, so this is 7 radical 3 over 3. And let me write in blue how to type this. 7 radical 3 
over 3. Okay, now I need to solve for M, right? I remembered, I remembered I said from the small side to get to the big side, you multiply by 2. So that means that I have, let me write a big fraction. I have 7 radical 3 over 3, except to begin with, I write what I have, the small side, and I have to multiply by 2. When we multiply, we put it on top of a fraction. When we divide, we put it at the bottom. So in this case, let me put my two on the top. So I'm gonna call this 14 radical three over three. Look, I combine my whole number, seven times two, right? Whole numbers with whole numbers can be combined. So 14 radical three over three. Look at your fraction. 14 over 3. Can you do better? Can you simplify? No. So that's it. Let me write in blue. How will you type that? 14 radical 3 over 3. If you have questions, feel free to contact me. Thank <laughs> you.